Hi, I'm Dr. Allison Muller, and I'm a toxicologist outside of Philadelphia who does expert witness work with attorneys all over the U.S. I wanted to share with you today, just in a few minute video, what my process is for intake of cases and the beginning process that I undergo for cases. So when an attorney first contacts me about a case, I have a few questions. First question is, who are the parties in the case? And that helps me determine if I have a conflict in any way with the case. Should there be no conflict, I want to hear just at a very high level, you know, a few lines about really what the case entails. What is the case about? And that tells me if the case, first of all, in my opinion, needs a toxicologist or another expert. Or perhaps it does need a toxicologist, but it's not particularly in my scope of experience or expertise. In that case, I'll talk to the attorney about if I have someone else in mind that I feel may be a good fit for them as an expert. So if the case is something that is within my realm of expertise and there's no conflict, I will ask the attorney what the timeline is for the case review. If it's a very rapid turnaround, unless I have the availability in my schedule to really give it my full attention, I won't take the case. As far as I'm concerned, there's no thing as a rush job when it comes to uh, me as an expert witness reviewing the facts of the case. So if there is a timeline that I'm able to work with, I will then let the attorney know I will send along my my professional services agreement, which contains a HIPAA agreements, because oftentimes I am being sent medical records, retention agreement, and outlines other um, agreement terms for our engagement. I do require a retainer before any work is started, although it is a partially refundable retainer. So this way, if let's say the case review does not reveal that I'd be doing further work on the case, there'd be no report or further consultation or testimony that would be needed on my part, then the, re the retainer funds were not used for the review, then they would be partially refunded to the attorney. So other than the professional services agreement, the other thing that I send the attorney would be my curriculum vitae. And so this way, the attorney has the CV not only for his or her records, but to share with the client. And then once I have received the signed agreement and the retainer, I give the green light to the attorney to send me records, preferably in electronic format if that's possible. It certainly saves room in my office should things be in electronic format sent to me in a secure, uh, in a secure format. And then when I'm doing my review, um, I'll first ask the attorney if there's any other materials that are pending. Um, in other words, is discovery complete or will there be other materials coming my way? It doesn't necessarily mean that I can't give at least an opinion at that point with what I have. Sometimes I can and then um, you know, say my opinion, of course, may change based on additional materials that would be presented to me. So after my review of the case, and review of the case is a careful read of all the materials that I've given, and sometimes it's a careful listen as well. Sometimes I get um, you know, cell phone records, recordings, I get videos, I get crime scene pictures, other photographs. Because as a toxicologist, as working as an expert witness, it's not all about, okay, what's the toxicology report say? I like to think of myself as, you know, the Nancy Drew in toxicology, really to be able to determine, um, you know, let's say the role of a drug in a, in a criminal case or, you know, the role of a drug in a medical malpractice case or impairment case. It really is helpful to have other information. And so I tell the attorney to send me everything that they have, even if they don't think that it's going to be something that a toxicologist would need for uh, giving an expert opinion, because really I don't know what the attorney has that can be helpful to me until they share it with me. And so I also may do a medical literature search if it's something that I feel may have been reported in the literature and would be 
um, important for us to know about if there's been similar such cases reported in the literature or such. So there also may be a literature search. That's usually um, something that's done for me fairly quickly and um, you know, effortlessly since I also do medical writing and medical education um, as part of my consulting business. So I'm doing those searches quite frequently. And then after I go through all of the records that I have and possibly do that medical literature search, I will contact the attorney to discuss my findings and opinion via phone. And sometimes the opinion is I don't have enough information. Um, in other words, I can't give an opinion, I need more information, or if this is all the information we have, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Sometimes that is the case. And the reason why I have a conversation with the attorney prior to putting pen to paper is that the attorney may not need a report from me or want a report from me. So until we discuss my findings and my opinion, I'm not going to spend the time or spend the client's money writing a report so that I have to get um, agreement from the attorney to move forward with the report um, before I would start drafting one. And I will present a separate video on the report process that I undertake um, in such situations. Thank you for watching this video and hope you join me for future topics in toxicology.